Cool. Okay, we are live. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for listening in today. Uh, we are coming to you live, uh, live, live uh, for Cyber Smart Week 2023. If you don't know who uh, we are, uh, my name is Phil, founder and CEO of Omidly, and this is Amy. Uh, Amy's our marketing manager here at Omidly, and what we are is a cyber resilience platform to help transform the security, uh, transform you into a security superhero in your team. So Omidly is your super cybersecurity sidekick, making you the superhero leading your activity and of your security and privacy program. We help you make progress, build resilience, fuel growth, all in one collaborative workspace. And because it's Cybersecurity Week, uh, we thought we'd bring you a live stream and we'll talk about some of the common tactics and techniques for actually building a resilient business. So CERT NZ um, are helping us out a lot here uh, and they are putting on this this week and we piggybacking on the whole effort to, um, to bring you some tips and tricks and make life a little bit easier. So what we're trying to do really is help safeguard the world's uh, most vulnerable businesses from cyber threats. So we've got a big vision here at Onwardly to really help as many businesses as possible build genuine resilience, both in the form of security uh, and privacy. So we want to champion those and we hope what we what we share today will be useful to you. It's very practical, very, use, uh, very applicable, and uh, we hope you get something from it. Yes. Yeah, so before we get into things, I think it's important that we define what cyber resilience is. Cyber resilience is your business's ability to detect, protect, respond, and recover from cyber threats. So here at Onwardly, we're all about starting with the basics and making meaningful progress to secure your business. So as you may know, small to medium businesses are most at risk, yet don't often have the enterprise level security options available but they do need a plan of attack to build cyber resilience. So that's what we're talking about today. There are four parts to our chat, which all relate to cyber resilience and getting you cyber resilient as a small business. So we're gonna start with detect, protect, respond and recover. So let's get into the first part, which is detect. We are starting with our first tip, which is to install software updates. This is important because when you keep your devices and software up to date, you are keeping your system safe. And devices and software that is not up to date are most at risk of attacks. So Phil, can you tell us a little bit more about business, why businesses should install software updates and not ignore those notifications? <laughs> yeah, look, and, look, and just first up, if you're one of those people that leaves, <clears throat> leaves Google Chrome with a little red link saying, please update desperately, then look, we're coming for you. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, seriously, you know, importing, installing software updates, and this is, you know, OS level stuff, uh, operating system wide, so it might be on your laptop, could be on your phone, your iPad, um, but also patching, uh, patching your systems as well. So, you know, if you look after, you know, software uh, of any kind, then, you know, patching dependencies and libraries. Security fixes are released all the time. Security vulnerabilities are discovered all the time. And in this modern world of continuously shipping software um, there's a lot of updates coming down the pipe every day every week and it's really really important that we install these in the most effective and automated way possible so some, some things we can do um, here are things like just putting software updates on on pretty much automatic so where it's like say your mac os or windows just a, it, pretty much automatic out of the box now but keep those settings on keep it keep them rolling through uh, make sure that those things are patched in a timely sort of way you know take a moment to restart your computer you know, I know we're all busy. We've got, we're all frantic, particularly at this time of the year. Um, but really, really important. You just take a moment to restart and install that update because it will help protect um, your your devices from from those sorts of vulnerabilities. In the same way, if your software stack is is using out of date dependencies, it is a risk. And so it's important that you know if you can keep those up to date as much as possible. Here at Onwardly, we patch things um, very, very regularly. And it makes it easier to actually install the next level of patching that comes out in the future as well. You don't want to be in a position where you're stuck several versions behind of a library and it just becomes harder and harder to update. You start missing out on really critical vulnerability updates for those things. So patch everything regularly, test it, make sure that you're doing that as, as much as possible. And you're, and, you're, and you're putting automated things in place to help notify you that those things are out of date um, as well. So. If you uh, probably last part to add in this is if you have, you know, the same thing applies not only to your business devices, but your to your personal devices. So sometimes those things are, are blurred. You know, you're using your personal device with business information on it, uh, as we commonly do. 
uh, particularly a phone, for example. So really important that you're, you're doing, you know, good, you've got good policy in your organization to, to make sure that those personal devices are also patched at the same level because they're part of the business environment too. They probably hold sensitive information and data on them, which, which you really don't want um, to be compromised. So uh, make sure that you have a policy across your organization to what people should be, how people should be treating both their own personal devices if they use them for work and of course your business um, systems as well. Yes, very important. Install those <laughs> software updates. So Thanks. next in detect, <laughs> next in detect is um, setting up logs. So firstly, for those that don't know, what are logs and what type of warnings may you want to put in place to detect cyber threats? Yeah. So uh, are you still with us, Amy? Yep. Okay. Frozen there for a second. I think we're good. So logs, uh, logs just tell you what's happening essentially. If you're flying blind and you don't have logging information um, anywhere, such as you know failed login attempts or something going on with your network, you just don't know what's going on. So logs are a really, really critical way of providing a paper trail of evidence that things are happening, and also as a mechanism to alert for suspicious or strange activity as well. So. Logging is really, really critical. So things like if you own a web app, if you run a web application, logging really critical types of events that go on in the application, such as logging in, logging out, maybe it's other related events there. And actually having some alerts set up to, to, to make sure that, you know, when things reach a critical threshold that someone's getting notified as well. Um, logs can happen just about at every level in every system um, um, that you have. So have a think about where you should be logging what information you should be logging and making sure that that's, that information is readily available and not able to be easily modified or, or sort of corrupted as well. Yeah, absolutely. So now we're going to move on to protect and something we talk a lot about in our content is 2FA. It's an extra layer of defense beyond passwords. Can you talk a bit about what it is for those that may not know? and why it matters and how you can implement 2FA as both an individual and encourage it throughout your organization. Yeah, indeed, indeed. Look, I mean, we will, hopefully by now, we've all heard about 2FA. <laughs> if you haven't, then we've, you know, you've got some work to do, but look, it's really, really important. And I think what I see is that people acknowledge it, perhaps they've got it enabled for a couple of different systems, but you really need to try and enable it for as much as possible. And the reason you need to do that is because you know, uh, someone if someone compromises a might like what you might think is a minor product or system in your in your collection of systems, they can use that as an escalation point to to get to the bigger ones. So it's really important to to start with trying to secure everything with two FA. It makes it a lot harder, not impossible, but a lot harder for people to to get into certain systems. And also with your personal systems as well. This is something that I I see people not often thinking about is you need to actually do the same thing for your personal email and your personal identity accounts because they are a really common escalation point into a business uh, environment. So we've all occasionally had to email something to work from a personal email address or vice versa. So there is some level of interaction between personal accounts and business accounts. And if personal accounts are not protected with 2FA, I'm talking about your personal email, your personal banking and things like that, um, then if they're compromised, they can be used to get into the business environment. So really critical just do it for as many things as possible and just about every product these days supports it if they don't then maybe choose a product that does yeah definitely so for anything that you log into this week make sure that 2FA is set up it only takes two to three minutes to do and it's really important yeah and look what really common thing is just to make a list to make a list make sure you have a list of all your common systems and services you know write them down uh, and, and to go through methodically and check is 2FA turned on for everybody? Is it enforced for everybody? Who, who, you know, it's a good idea to do a little user access review at that point as well and just make sure it's turned on. Uh, it might seem a little bit overkill, but trust me, it'll make a huge difference. Yeah. yeah, amazing. So, next part is only collecting the data that you really need because your level of risk is based on the amount of data that you have and it becomes more valuable valuable to attackers the more that you collect so by collecting only what you need you reduce that risk what are some of the ways that businesses can ensure that they are only collecting that data that they actually need yeah it's a, that's a good point i mean i think it's it's first first and foremost really important to understand what information you are collecting and holding. And that sounds like quite a simple thing to say, but many organizations don't. Uh, and they may be holding a lot more 
information than they realize. We've seen examples of, uh, of, of, of hacks and breaches where companies have lost a lot of information to, you know, to hackers, and then and then people have discovered that they've, this organization is still holding information on them, you know, sort of 15 years later when they haven't been a customer and that information should have been long gone, things like driver's licenses and things like that. So, uh, you know, every every company should, <clears throat> should be really keenly aware of what it is collecting, what it is holding, and what the retention policy is around that. You know, do you delete uh, organizations that are no longer doing business with you or do you hold a certain information how long do you hold it for being really clear on that you know and and not collecting things you don't need I think we're gone of the days where you know the sort of wild west of the internet 10 years ago when people used to just collect everything and hold it for some sort of future purpose I think that's really that's really uh we're no longer living in those times so being really meaningful about what you're collecting particularly from a privacy point of view as well being really intentional and explicit about what you're collecting and what you're using it for is really critical to Good privacy workflows and so you know you could tr you could sort of think about that in the context of all your information um but being really meaningful in that you know talking about it with your product teams or your operational teams this is what we collect this is what we do with it this is how long we hold it for because you don't want information ideally longer than you need it for or that's or that, that you don't need in the first place um, it just creates more of a risk for you yeah and on top of that also your marketing and sales teams as well what type of information they're collecting Exactly, exactly, for sure. Yep, every part of the business is always collecting something. So yep. uh, the first step is just awareness of what's actually been collected. And then you can have a conversation about does that need to be collected? Does it need to be held, et cetera, et cetera. Yes, and making sure that you're encrypting any data that you do collect. Yeah, look, this is not that hard to do these days. You know, like a lot of the business, a lot of the, the, the third party services and tools that we use support this. So a little bit of care and attention just to make sure that that information is is held securely, uh, particularly if it's a production database, for example, in your own product. So uh, not hard to do, just takes a little bit of care and attention. Yes, for sure. Now let's move on to the response. So it's important to create a plan for when things do go wrong. If you have a cyber incident, you'll need to know what those steps are to keep your business running. So, Phil, what is a cyber incident response plan and what should teams do to create a plan that is effective in response to a cyber attack? Yeah, sure. Look, I mean, uh, a, a, big, a big key part of cyber resilience is responding. And this is sometimes not often thought about as much. You know, we think about protecting and putting up safeguards and, and uh, you know, uh, tools to stop the attack happening in the first place, which is great. But, but actually equally important maybe even more important in some ways is the ability to respond effectively if something does happen and re resilience is really measured by your ability to get back up in the face of an event happening not necessarily preventing it in the first place although as much as we would like to so so really a critical part of doing security well and and the same thing extends to privacy if there's an event there is thinking about what could go wrong Right and 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 maybe getting together with the team and saying, okay, well, what are some scenarios here that could go really badly? You know, if we lose our production database, or we lose our complete commercial secrets in this sense, or we lose this really important information, or it gets corrupted, or or what have you. Thinking about those scenarios and then going, okay, well, what would we actually do in that case? Okay, we need to we need to assign some roles to some people. We need to to think about how methodically we kind of recover. Do we shut some things down? Do we limit access? Do we, who's, who's actually going to be running point on this? Who's going to be communicating it? Uh, and how do we message things out to customers and to the public as well? Because you may be hearing about it for the first time through the media. Um, you know, maybe other people know before you even know, which is quite common. Um, so what you don't want to be is completely unprepared and never have thought about this or rehearsed any of these types of scenarios. Uh, um, and because making it up on the spot in the time of incident is very, very, very stressful. Um, so by planning this, creating creating a plan, even just some simple things like that and thinking about those types of scenarios will mean that if it were to happen, you are more prepared to recover. And recovering and responding well is really half the battle. You know, you can respond in a way that loses customer confidence and trust uh, and damages your business and your brand and your reputation and maybe even puts you out of business. Or you can respond in a way that actually wins back some of that customer trust and confidence um, and goes a long way towards recovering when recovering well um, so the, the good news is this is very much in your control um, you know you can't always control what happens to you 
Uh, nobody is 100% safe and secure. It's just impossible, but you can become well organized and planned so that you can respond well and effectively should something should something occur. Exactly. And it really leads well into our last part, which is about recovery. And this is about backing up your data and how important it is to back up your data. So yep. what types of data should businesses be backing up? How often should they be doing this? And how can they keep a copy of this data? Yeah, good question. I mean, look, I mean, the one thing to think about is if you were to lose that information, how would your business still be able to recover, to respond or to, to, to operate in the first place? So you have a lot of types of information in the business. You have emails, you have calendaring, you have, you know, CRM systems, you have production databases, you have um, design files, you have all sorts of stuff. So the answer is, short answer is as much as possible should be backed up. Now, <clears throat> you might be relying on different services and clouds and file systems and all sorts of stuff. So there's, it's not all going to look exactly the same. Um, but the key thing is how do you how do you get back up and running if you were to lose a copy of these things? Um, the most common one thought about might be might be a production database for a, say like an application of software company. You know, typically those and anything like that should be backed up, should be backed up off site somewhere different to the original source. And you should have a plan and be able to recover and test the recovery of that information on a regular basis as well so it's not only ability to you know to know that you've got a backup it's ability to actually restore that and confidently get back to a certain point in the past <clears throat> and you can determine what that might be how much time or information you actually lose in that maybe it's an hour maybe it's a day or maybe it's something in between maybe it's none at all uh, but the ability to confidently know that you can get back to where where you need it to be uh, and so uh, at the very least the most critical information in your organization should be verified to be able to be restored um, from a different location absolutely uh, so that wraps up all of our content for cyber smart week do you have anything else you want to add phil yeah look uh <clears throat> thanks to cert nz uh and uh, uh their campaign around cyber smart week uh you know there is a site called own your online i believe uh code on so go check that out as well it's got some great resources and tips and further information like things that we've talked about today so huge shout out to certain z for uh for running this campaign we're getting on behind it and trying to help kiwis and, and many organizations across uh, across the globe just be safe uh, and protect their information look if you need some extra help with this uh Omidly is a cyber resilience and privacy platform which helps organizations do all of this and more it's a space where you can build capability, report, build governance systems and, and resiliency and a, and a full program of work to really help you do this properly and create a resilient business. So check us out, omidly.io. You can start a free trial. You can talk to us. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, and it's suitable for any organization from just a couple of people upwards. So we'd love to love to you to check us out. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. If you do have any questions for us, please leave them in the comments and we will follow up with you. Absolutely. Thanks, everyone. Thanks.